first thing that you want to do is review or assess your work area which I'm doing so first thing I know for a fact I'm gonna to have to remove is this here 2 by 4 and probably just cut this one maybe about right here with that 2 by 4 removed now we can go on and take measurements on this 2 by 4 here and verify exactly how much needs to be cut off to make room for what we need to do. It would also be very wise to note and to make sure that you don't try to cut through any nails. Okay, they can be kind of hidden in there, so you got to pay close attention. Here's one right there. Because, of course, you're using a wood saw and you try to cut through one of these nails, then you can pretty much forget it and you probably are going to have a nice bad accident going on so again just want to keep in mind nails one of the things that I also already did was going and knocked these nails that were poking out down to get them out of my way this one's not really protruding through too well so I can't really get to it um, but again you basically want to clear your work area and make sure again that you have room do what it is that you need to do. Okay, once you have your work area clear, then if you notice I've put on a mask since I did some cutting, and especially if you have any insulation down, you definitely want to use a mask because you don't want to be breathing that stuff. So anyway, again, once you've cleared those 2x4s out of the way, alright, giving yourself some space to work. Then you want to go on and take maybe a jigsaw and start going on and clearing these rough hewn edges. Make it smooth. The smoother it is, the easier that air is going to flow out. Alright ladies and gentlemen, now that you've got everything cleared out, I used a jigsaw. Uh, be very careful to give yourself some space in between Okay, because if yours is anything like mine if you notice there isn't much room Between the edge of that wood or rather I should say where the wood starts And where those I Guess you could call it the loos or whatever All right, these little things right here start so be very careful that you don't cut through the screen or Whatever you have this there, keeping bugs out. All right, while letting the air pass through. So again, we've got everything clean, edgewise. Now it's time to frame our box. Okay, uh, what I've done now is I've put the base to what's going to be my box out in place after again everything is cleared out I put in two nails all right per side so two up here and boy you don't want to know how tough it was to get those two in on that side alrighty folks what's going on now basically is I just took measurements uh, from here to here if you notice I'm going to actually incorporate this 2 by 6 into my box design that way I don't have to do too much um, as far as a, a perfect cut and then worrying about that big gap right up there alright so again uh, what I'm going to do is going to take some 2 by 6's and put from here to there and to go along that baseline as well and go up there and what that is going to achieve is some added stability for that mounting plate to make sure that it is very much so secure this is going to be holding that 13 pound fan and I do without a shadow of a doubt want to make sure that there is more than enough nails securing that housing to my house Alrighty, YouTubers, what I want right now 
is as much of a flush mount as I can get against this here 2x4 as possible. This rafter right here. So that one right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of wood. It's 2x6. I'm going to line it up against that 2x4 so that it's flush. And then I'm going to trace along there and that's going to give me the angle that I need all right, to be flush against that rafter. All right, folks, so I've traced and cut. And sorry, I was doing a little bit of scratch work on this one. All right, but I've traced and cut. All right, I drew two lines so you could see how they parallel. And again, you notice that they're flush. And then now here we have what seems to be a nice 90 degree angle. So what I'm going to do, as well as what I recommend that you do, is put some weather stripping in between any pieces of wood to try to get as much of an airtight seal, again, an airtight seal as possible. All right, folks, taking a look at things and how they're looking when I've got my, all right, my two by six here in place, then what I'm gonna do, if you notice here, all right, what is left, just gonna guesstimate that at approximately two inches. All right, now the reason I'm approximating two inches because this of course is, well no, we won't use two. Use one and a half. I'm gonna take one and a half inches from both sides of the total measure of from this point here, going over to this point here. And what that's gonna do is give us the length of that other two by six that's going to go in between these two. Alrighty folks, the distance that I decided for my particular application was 28 and 3 16 Now if you notice, it's going to be where my thumb is and I've got that much room all right, in between here and over there that's going to provide for some nice overlap of that two by six on each end so it's going to give some good stability so in other words just so you can get an imagination of why i'm saying that if you take a look at my hand all right of course it's not by any means six inches wide but again if you notice it's going to allow it's going to prevent it from wobbling all right vertically and horizontally to a certain extent thanks to this one here same thing over there all right especially with this damaged 2x4 that happens to be on my home right at the particular area where I need this to be secure so again you want overlap also I didn't want that long one on the bottom to span the entire length because again that will give no overlap but it's going to have overlap right here all right and it's going to be prevented from wobbling this way and of course this way because it's going to be nailed rather securely right up against there all righty folks i cut my particular piece i went on and cut it back just a little from the 28 and 316 the 28 so therefore measured the halfway point at 14 inches of 28 that is now what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna make my way over here I'm gonna move my other pieces out of the way enough so that I could see my nail and my nail I'm gonna line that up all right with there that center point and again showing you that I left my overlap over here and I got my overlap over there just like I want it for stability again put a center mark on there line it up 
with the nails that's going to represent the center of your wood and the center of your box. All right, folks, what's going on now is I'm going to figure out where I'm going to put my nails. Okay, so I'm going to line my center mark up with the center, all right, of this 2x4 here. That's going vertical. You want to make sure, for instance, if you notice, this 2x4 has a little bit of a bad spot here. So we don't want to put any nails there. It's already a weak part of the wood. So maybe you'll pick a point over here. Remember, you want to go about three quarter inches up. So about here. About here. And again, you want to keep your spacing about equal. About here. I want to have it on either side of that because, of course, you know you should have nails going down through here. And it's two of them, so we don't want to drive nails on nails. This is one of the reasons I'm looking at it in this way. Alright, again, want to space it out. And again, going to the end. But not all the way because you will split wood and you don't want to split your wood. So there you go. Alrighty, if you noticed, I've already taken the liberty of pre-tapping my nails. Okay, this is very helpful when you're working by yourself. Or even if you do have a helper, it still saves fingers. And possibly thumbs. If you notice, I have it so they just barely protrude out of the wood. Alright, and again, this is going to save you a lot of time, a lot of effort. A lot of potential banging of your fingers and or thumbs. Point of interest. I am going to make sure to put some spray adhesive down with and before I put down my foam strip to again try to get that great airtight seal as much as possible. Alright, when you put that foam strip down, make sure all right, if you're spraying that spray adhesive, folks, that you do use a mask or use in a well-ventilated area. So again, got my foam stripped down. And now it's time to go on and nail everything securely. All right, once that step is complete, all right, then of course we have our base securely up there again we've got our center mark lined up rather nicely and that's good on to the next step going to secure these on the sides and now ladies and gentlemen we have a good foundation for our face plate to be mounted on. I'm just calling it a face plate or the fan plate or whatever to be mounted on. We got a nice good box. Here's a neat little trick that a lot of people will use with bent nails. Alright, if you take that nail and you put it up against something flat, that can take a beating. Then I'm going to show you what you can accomplish with that. Alright, if you hammer the top of this arch, then you can actually flatten out this nail and turn it into a usable one again. 